I got fired from Starbucks. I'm assuming you either like would not show up because you're playing games or would oversleep. Is either of those correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to the ninth ever offline TV podcast. It is your Ooh. host, Disguised Toast. That's me. Hi. And I'm joined today by the newest OTV member, John Masayoshi. What's your last name? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing it public yet. Oh, it's not public. That it's no, it's actually public. I just never talk about it. Yeah, because now that I think about it, it's like, what is your last name? I'm sure if I Google it, I'll find it. Oh no, it's it's so easy to find. It's just like my mom's very paranoid. Uh huh. So I never talked about it, but like people definitely have typed in my chat. Okay, but yeah, you don't talk about it, and I don't know. I just call you John. What, what would you? Okay, that'll be like the we we can announce on this podcast. What do you think it is? Okay, so you're half white, half Asian. Mm-hmm. It's really important to know what your dad is so I can figure it out. Now, logically, from what I've seen, white men steal Asian women from us. So I'm guessing a white father, Mm. which would be really hard to guess because with Asians, you got Wang Chang Lang. (laughs) You, I don't know. About, <laughs> I don't know about Japan. <laughs> All right, <you're> Japanese. <laughs> Japanese. Oh man, Japanese is even harder, right? There's a lot. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think Japanese last name, and all I can think of is anime character names. Like I've heard like Hana or like I don't know. There's like there are for sure like ja- J- Japanese last name is like so hard. I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's so, so much things. of it. Like Shikamaru and Uzumaki. Yeah, and Uchiha. <laughs> the common one is so common. The, the ones everyone know. <laughs> but uh, give me a hand. Is your dad the white one or the Asian one? He's the white, yeah. German Italian. German Italian. And apparently he did a DNA test. He's a French, he said. So I feel like I need to do a DNA test. I feel like my DNA is a lie now. Toast, I'm going to let you know I would have never guessed John's last name. Is it? It's, it's not a common last name. I'm guessing. I would not say so. <laughs> it, I just feel like I have the whitest name. Is it like, is it like a American white name or like a European German white name? I'll give you a hint. It's a word, not a name. Smith. <laughs> John Smith. That's like pretty. It's like the same ballpark. <laughs> John Smith. Take it away, John. It's Cable. My name is John Cable. <laughs> like, and every time I have like signed up for anything, Selena will look at me like, "But no, what's your last name?" Or Jan will be like, <laughs> "Okay, no, but like last name." Though. Like cable, like a piece of wire. Cable car, cable like action figure, just straight up cable. Cable. Yeah. Yeah, I would never guess that. And, I've and, never met anyone with <laughs> the name Cable besides a comic book character. I was always a cable guy or like yeah stuff like that. Oh, the, the people in school like every teacher. Like cable guy, <laughs> hey cable, like never like my first name. They must have thought they were really original when they oh, came yeah, up with for it. Sure. All of them. All right, so John Cable, welcome. So, Thank you. how long have you been in OTV now? It's like two weeks. I love two weeks Ta- since we announced it. <laughs> I have no time because like from a, from like signing to like prep, mm-hmm. I'm like I don't know when official OTV was. Mm-hmm. I guess since an, uh, when when did the announcement come out? I think the video dropped two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks yeah. in. Yeah. And then the Thanksgiving one launched today. Today. Nice. How has your life changed? For the better, for the worse, more famous, or just completely <laughs> normal? Nothing nothing changed. Currently, everything is normal, but I feel like we're taking break after like all the push we did mm-hmm. for announcement. And I feel like it's going to change for the better, for sure, because like... I feel like my work for OTV in terms of content creation is like very project oriented and not like individual video. I feel like that's not, I don't shine there. All right. Yeah. Well, let's give the audience a chance to get to know John Masayoshi Cable all the way from the beginning. Oh boy. Of your childhood. When did you start gaming? That's a good question. You've always been like, a god at games from what I know. Cause I first met you in Fortnite mm. five, four, four, five years ago, I would say. Yeah. Fortnite was 
was an interesting time. That yeah. was like the game. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go pro in this. I was you, like, I was gonna push for it, but it was everyone was hungry for it. Yeah, because Fortnite was the height of gaming, essentially, like the number one game for such a long time. Every kid, every teenager, every like young adult was trying to be like, I'm gonna be the Fortnite guy after seeing Ninja. Yeah, well, even like before Ninja, like. Uh-huh. I, you just like kind of felt the thirst to like be the best. Mm-hmm. Like you're just running these people like, oh, this guy's practiced way more than me. And then you just see people doing like 14 to 16 hour streams consistently. Like not only for the views, but just to be the best. And it was weird in Fortnite because there's no niche. Like in when I, I came from League, it's like you could be the best support player, mm-hmm. mid laner, jungler, or even like within those, like the best Cassidy player, the best Cinder player. It was just best Fortnite player yeah <laughs> like you could do like double pump but they kept removing that best builder but like it just kind of came to best Fortnite player so like were you streaming when you were playing league very on and off mm-hmm. uh i started um when it, it was justin tv and owned 3d oh wow before and, twitch yeah so i was in a skype call with my friends and they're all around all around like silverish mm-hmm. elo and they wanted to watch me play 1v1s against them and Skype screen capture was so bad, like 10 <laughs> FPS back then. All right. So I, uh, they should be owned. And then from there, it just kind of like started. Streaming was like really fun. I tried YouTube editing and I thought it was kind of fun, but live streaming was just a lot more interesting to me, mm-hmm. more appealing. So you were streaming mostly to your friends watching you play. Mm-hmm. Okay. I stream League of Legends and they just ask questions like, like what am I, what am I doing here and there? Or even like, I remember the first like love I had for streaming was like they were pogging in the call <laughs> at me buying items. I would recall and like instantly right click to mid lane, buy all my stuff and like not have to stop. Uh huh. And I remember like practicing that for so long, but like they just like loved it. Uh, so, yeah. so you stream League and then you tried Fortnite. And then were you streaming Fortnite as well? So yeah, I started streaming Fortnite because I wanted to try to go pro or like be, yeah, I wanted to go pro, honestly. And I saw that as like, oh, it'd be really cool to make a video out of this. In my head, I was like, from like zero, I like maybe five hours in and Mm -hmm. I was like all the way to pro player. Mm -hmm. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. You're not a pro Fortnite player. No, didn't happen. What made you give up on your Fortnite dreams? It was very... It was hard because it looked like friends of friends were only getting in tournaments uh-huh. or the people that like got rank one in other tournaments. Right. So I was like, so I have to grind all the way to rank one. Uh, but even to get in those tournaments, you had to like get your foot in. And yeah, that was just, it was very hard at the time. But then they announced a ladder system. But at that time, that's when streamer camp happened. Right. Streamer camp. The, would you say that was like a big break in your content creation career? Oh, yeah. You can see it like in my stats. Mm-hmm. I don't know where it started. It just says like 2012, I think, or like not 2014, mm-hmm. whenever my account was made. It just says like two to five average viewer. To like How long 50. did you stream for to two to five viewers? Um, so Own3D shut down. Right. I didn't like Justin TV UI at the time, but then when the Twitch announcement happened, I actually kind of liked that UI. And my friend was streaming like Dark Souls at the time and we watched him play that. Uh, So whenever that happened, like the UI on Twitch, very similar to old YouTube. You could like, people were putting their socials on the left and right side. It was like banners. Oh, like that was a long time ago. Yeah, I would, I had like Masayoshi on the left side (laughs) and like the Facebook, (laughs) Twitter and like all of my banners of the, it was fun. I liked Photoshop a lot. Uh, so designing Twitch channel and my YouTube like was always the most fun to me. But then like streaming was like the side thing. Got it. So streamer camp was a uh, like a little event our friends hosted. Uh, I think started by Boxbox Albert, right? Boxbox and Foosley. Foosley, and then they just invited eight. Was it eight? Four? For years it was six. Three guys, six. three girls. Six. It three started guys, off with three girls. Yeah. Uh, I ran into Albert at TwitchCon or oh. BoxBox. He noticed I was streaming a lot of Fortnite. Right. And I was uploading highlights. It wasn't really to be like personality. It was more so just like to get my name out there for a reputation to become the pro. 
Um, but he saw there's like a lot of effort towards streaming and he's like, hey, we're doing streamer camp and we need more personalities. Would you please come to this? Like it would be, I think it'd be a lot of fun and I think you could do it. Mm -hmm. And was oh, this scary? Cause you're not from LA, are you? Uh, no. So he was like, fly out to Los Angeles, come hang out with a bunch of streamers for like a weekend. It sounded like a lot of fun though. And it was mainly like, I would just freeze up on camera. I've never been on camera. Like besides a webcam, it mm -hmm. just felt very different to me. Yeah. It's like a lot of public performance anxiety with like thousands of viewers watching. Right. And IRL streaming and IRL like streaming. It was just a whole different environment. Yeah. How was your streamer camp experience? Cause <laughs> I, I've seen like clips and I, I sort of got you. You look really awkward sometimes. <laughs> so, so, so Edison put it like, John, you're a clenched butthole. He's like, but now you're you're such a loose butthole. I was like, oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> thanks, Edison. Yeah, um, I heard a story that you like before streamer camp, um, people like didn't know who you were and weren't sure if they wanted to invite you. But Albert was like, invite him. I promise you. By the end of it, like. He'll show up. I, I owe Albert. Leslie was tuned into my stream and she's like, Albert, are you sure? <laughs> like, he should go to Chamber Crime. He's like, trust me. <laughs> We've played games in the past. He's good. He's good. He's good for it. Um, but we're, uh, Chamber Camp ended and then it just kind of took off from there. It went from like a five to 10 viewer average to just like 70. And then the trio started between Jody Peter and I. And then I would like, I was always, I had these list, list of games. They had lists of games, like we just kept going on and here we are. Speaking of streamer camp, that's where you first met one Miss Quarter Jade, right? Yeah, that's actually where I first met Jody. First met her. What was your first impression of her? <laughs> uh, Very like just, she was very excited. Did you ever expect to be dating her for years after that moment not at all we were, we were just like i feel like we did hit it off mm -hmm. but it was just like it's a friend thing yeah i just saw like a friendship out of it but it just turned into something more so after streamer camp you moved in with a bunch of content creators one thing i always like uh talking with you about is uh your experience in among us because <laughs> i gotta say out of everyone i play with you're probably the most honest person <laughs> Who's ever played the game? Do you find it hard to lie to people? I cannot lie to people. <laughs> it's it was so like the first time, like I remember you guys would pick on me like, so John, <laughs> how'd this guy die? Like <laughs> he he tripped. <laughs> uh, Jody, he was with Jody. <laughs> like it's just so hard. I I feel like I kind of got used to it, but like I could only I've only found like one way to lie, and mm. then that'd be my one way to lie, and like. Everyone caught on to how I would lie. How how would you lie? There was a point where I'm like, okay, I can't lie. I might as well. It was like after, it was like after two days in, I'm like, there's no way I can lie. I might as well just always play sus or just troll. So there's no way like in, um, imposter or not, I they won't suspect me. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it would go chaotic because Saikuno end up also having that place out when we meet up. Yeah. So like, it would just be pure chaos. I was like, okay, this is too troll. I would just all in on every lie, just like, hail, hail Marys. Uh -huh. well, yeah. well, why, why do you think you can't lie? Is it like an upbringing thing? Or is it like, man, that's dishonest. I don't want to lie to people. <laughs> <laughs> I just never played Mafia. So that was like my first ever Mafia game. I heard of Town of Salem. Uh, but yeah, I like... I was not used to that at is all. It, it was a whole uncomfortable lying to people. It was a very uncomfortable environment <laughs> for me. Like my first time playing Mafia, I tried to like, it was a werewolf card game at Peter's yeah. house one time, but like those are my first ever Mafia games. So like going into Among Us, I'm like, what is going on? Why is everyone so good at this? But then I learned like you guys played a lot of Mafia. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm like trying to like catch up and like feel the vibe of the lobby. I'm like, all right. Could you give us one truth and one lie right now? Oh. <laughs> One truth, one lie. Um, I got fired from Starbucks and I got kicked out of a convention. I got fired from Starbucks. Oh, both of them involved him being removed in some way. And that's already hard to believe. Like, why would John get kicked? Why would John get fired? I don't think he'll get fired kicked out maybe because like of an accident 
I don't know, because you're also like so quick to apologize if you did do something. Yeah, but then what if he's hanging out with Jody and she's kind of a wild card, <laughs> and she drags him into shenanigans? Uh, I couldn't hold her back. I'm gonna go for a context kind of answer. The lie is getting fired from Starbucks. I think you got kicked out of the convention. I got fired from Starbucks. So I was gonna guess that, <laughs> and my reasoning is I think because I'm assuming you either like would not show up because you're playing games or would oversleep. Is either of those correct? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so league season reset. Yes. Um, also, I had a I had a, like a girlfriend at the time, and I would like, oh my god, what, like I would come home f- to work because I had to work at four four thirty in the morning, mm-hmm. and it was just I there's so many nights where I just stay up all night. And my body, like, after, like, doing three all-nighters in a week, I had to, I did that a couple times, maybe even three times. My body was, like, shot. Um, but, like, they wouldn't reschedule me, <laughs> like, afternoon or, like, night shift because they just didn't have the people for it. So, like, I, I was fatiguing hard. So you just didn't show up? There was one night where I showed up. I... On my lunch, I, I live close enough to like just go home. I was like, I need to eat something. I can't eat Starbucks food because I've just had it so much this year. <laughs> like, I need something fresh. Like, I wanted to get like a fruit like from my house or like like I had a leftover salad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I ate that. Instantly threw up. Oh god. I I tried calling. I tried calling my supervisor, but I think she had her phone in the back charging it, and I texted her like, I'm like, I just threw up. I don't think I should come back in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is for sure like a violation. Like I need to go in, tell them so they know. But yeah. How did they fire you? Was it like an in-person firing or <laughs> was it a call firing? I they I showed up to work. They they should have called me. It would have been way better. I show up at 4 30 in the morning, and usually it's three people doing the opening or two. Right. But I know I walked in, I noticed they already had three people setting up. Oh wow, that's and a lot of people. And they're kind of like <laughs> like doing their thing. <laughs> I walk in, my manager is sitting there too. I'm like, why would you even wake up at 4.30 in the morning? Just call me. You can yeah. just tell me. But apparently they needed me to sign a paper. Uh, but like, I wouldn't want to make them wake up at 4.30 for that. I would have just came in, done them the solid. Uh-huh. But yeah. When you get fired from Starbucks, do you like get two weeks notice? Or is it just like, bye-bye, you don't work here anymore? I think in my condition, uh, <laughs> they seemed good to go. Mm-hmm. Which is very weird because they also said like they didn't have the people for it, which I don't think they, I think they just kind of like rushed it. But yeah, uh, I'm sure it's usually two weeks notice though. Wow. Or two weeks notice. No, I'm sure it's two weeks notice if you're quitting. Yeah. Wow. Fired from a Starbucks. Did you get to keep the apron and visor? No, it was like a, it was like a, uh, what I imagined if I got fired from like a police job. <laughs> turn in your badge. <laughs> turn your gun in badge. It's like apron off, name tag. Because you know those are like kind of like valuable. There's so many like Starbucks fanatics that people will try to buy those. I have my employee of the month badge. Oh, you went from employee, <laughs> well, of, the month. employee <laughs> of the month. Was that like? I was a good worker. I just like I would stay up all night way too much. Like I was just not healthy. I had the APM for it though. Drive through. I was on. That, those times it was speed running. Uh, Drive through at Starbucks is actually speed running. There's a timer from as soon as you pull up to the box. A timer starts ticking, and you don't want to get that past one minute. And then they go to the next window, and the timer goes again. And oh. you never want to let that go past two minutes, because oh. then you're like not a great drive-through. Like that's like bad. So like I would always ask like, do you want food first? Because then I can heat up the food. What? Because that's <laughs> that's two minutes right there. I'm like, okay, now what would you like for your drinks? And I'm prepping his drinks while he's while he's telling me. I'm like, would you like a frappuccino? Prepping that, prep like. It was a speedrunning game to me. It was wow. fun. So are you wearing like a headset with a mic and you can hear headset. everything? I was min-maxing everything. I would like mess with my employees playing like gotchi music sometimes. Like it was good. So like, you were already streaming at Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> but actually though, I at work, I always wanted to make like one person laugh before I left. And there was always this like, yeah, it was always fun just like messing with people. Yeah, it's kind of like you, you got an audience, you're entertaining and you got the task you're doing yeah. and you have a timer. So like once someone pulls up, where where's the timer? Is it like on a uh, on a wall somewhere? It's on a t- it's on a screen like right next to the window. And it just starts ticking. It just, yeah, it just starts ticking. You see that? Oh. It's you're in the green 
you're in the green. And do they record like, oh wow, he that's a personal best, like 33 seconds. Uh, yeah, apparently they have it. Like if you're the fastest window timer, like consistently, they'll like show up and like talk to you guys about it. Wow, like here's but, your and, fast and award. But also if you're doing bad, <laughs> I think they also show up and like, so how's inventory doing? Like how are you guys clean, sanitized? Like what's going on with window times? Oh. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah, it's like trying to get efficiency out of human to serve like capitalism. Like, there's, <laughs> there's like a there's like a there's like a political statement there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> Something about like man society. But that's really cool. I thought it was just like, oh, can I get your food? All right, here you go. Bye bye. Yeah. But they keep they time you and you're trying to like I'm, I think the average person doesn't care about the timer. Mm -hmm. It was just like my brain. I'm like, I gotta get that green split or <laughs> that gold split. I gotta, I gotta get the, my PB. Do you ever meet any like any horror stories, customers wise? Difficult? Not like horror, like the weird things. That, like, can I get, can I get a new water? My drink tastes like ice. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> ice is water, man. But like, there's like, there's just like little things. Nothing like horror story. We had a weird situation. I don't know if it's horror story, just a guy was doing whippets in our parking lot like for a week, <laughs> like consistently, like it was a shift to him. And he actually would go up to our window and ask for water. Like he'd go for our parking lot and we're like kind of look at him and he'd pull out, go in our drive through. Yo, can I get a water? And like you just hear like the metal rattling. It was just very interesting. Wait, what a whippets? It's like uh, it's like the equivalent of like inhaling helium, but it's some chemical. Oh, it's like the stuff you'd like when people are sucking balloons at a party. That's whippets. Oh, okay. His face was like blue too. It looked like he was freezing in his car. I don't know. That's must so have, weird. He like, must have been having a good time if it did it for a week. <laughs> that's the weird part to me. Is he kept showing up? Yeah, it was like the same dude. I'm like, same hey, time. whippet man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not illegal, right? I think it is. I think it, it is. is. Yeah. Dude, his door was rattling. It sounded like he had a, he would put in like his driver's seat door. Mm -hmm. I think like he dropped something at the drive-thru window, opened his door and heard like, <laughs> like all the whippet container, like canisters. Oh. Like, you know, like this, um, I don't remember, CO2 cartridges maybe. Oh, okay. Whippets are legal. Huh? Um. Oh yeah, you can buy them. I don't think we're condoning their use, but they are legal. <laughs> oh god, if you're gonna listen to this, like, I'm gonna try whippets now. It sounds like pretty good. <laughs> Dude, not this guy looked like I thought he was suffocating. He, his face was like purple and yeah. blue. Like they're meant for balloons, not for people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so they're like huffing like a kind of gas. Then. It's like compressed air. Yeah. That's so weird. I mean, I, I, I. Is it? I guess it makes sense for it to be legal because. You, you're free to inhale whatever you want, but... Oh, wait, wait, wait. In California, they're highly illegal. Oh, in California. Yeah, so I guess it's state by state. All right. We're locking it down, you know? We're locking down Whippet Man. Weird. <laughs> I remember one day he came with a girlfriend. <laughs> like, aw. <laughs> he found in love with his Whippet. <laughs> Starbucks, huh? Yeah. Past jobs, yeah. I've worked at a... I was a deli guy, deli clerk, a bag boy at a at a Vons, uh, it's courtesy clerk, um, prop house work, <laughs> like staking tents. Yeah. When you worked at deli, were you also front facing, like customer facing, or were you like yeah. in the back? Um, yeah, I was always talking to customers. Because I was going to say, you are known to be a very friendly and honest person in uh, the streaming scene. Like even our Frank was like John's a solid guy. Like he's very honest. Like he can't even lie in a video <laughs> game, right? Why is that? Like, is that like a, an upbringing thing? Your parents like kind of taught you to be like good. Did you watch a lot of anime? You're like Naruto, <laughs> Goku, I want to be just like them. Cause that's kind of the vibes I get when I talk to you. It's like, I didn't watch much anime. If anything, I was very confused what anime was mm -hmm. cause I grew up with like my grandma and grandpa like Bachan Jichan like with like Ponyo in Japanese and I thought that was a cartoon the whole time. I thought animes were also cartoons oh, and okay. my mom was like, what? <laughs> you just call anime cartoons? <laughs> uh, I went to, I think the biggest thing that made me, I think guilt was like, I went to a Catholic and a Christian school. Oh. I went to both, like I went to one, I went to a Catholic school and then I went to a Christian school and like, 
Aren't those the same thing? I'm sorry if I offend any religious people out there. When I hear Catholics and Christian, I'm like, they both believe in Jesus. Yes, but different it was very, forms it, of Jesus? I think I think the Christian school, it was, I can't tell if it was because it was private schools in uniform. The Catholic school was very, it felt like a regular public school, but we'd have to go to, we had like religious period yeah. or like religious Friday. Like every Friday we'd have to dress up like in, at least in a button up, yeah. but I'd wear like a Yu-Gi-Oh button up. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually, I actually ended up banning Yu-Gi-Oh that year. <laughs> They're like, because of you. Demon cards. There's <laughs> demons on those cards. <laughs> what is that Furby thing? You know what's funny is I, I also did 13 years of like Catholic school or Christian. I'm not sure. Oh my God. We're getting, <laughs> we're getting I get actually, so canceled. But, but uh, the... I was like the person to introduce Yu-Gi-Oh cards to my school. Oh, no. and then similarly they were banned because people started like trading them. Parents would call in and be like, "Hey, his like rare card was like <laughs> stolen for this common," and like people didn't know. So they're like, "Yeah, you can't bring these anymore." Oh wow! Yeah, mine was like they're demons. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, yeah, just like against this. Yeah, it was just against school rules at that mm-hmm. year. Now are you religious still? No, but I feel like the lessons from those schools, like definitely, I don't know. I there's so much just guilt, like, in, in lying for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm definitely like emotions on my sleeve with with that. Yeah, yeah. I went to um, Bible camp once. Like, I'm not a religious person. I didn't go to like a religious school, but. My mom wanted me to make friends and she said, oh, you should go on this little day trip with your friend, um, a Korean kid named Max. And she told me, yeah, it's just in the city. Mm. And I get on the bus and I take a small nap and eight hours later, I'm in another province. So in Canada, I went from um, Ontario to Quebec, which is an eight hour drive. And I realized I got tricked into attending Bible <laughs> camp one state away for a whole two weeks. I thought I was there for one day and I just cried nonstop the first five days. I would, that's like the <laughs> biggest trick of all. Like that is insane. It's like I, a double. That's quad, yeah, quad. I was just surrounded by people I didn't know and by like camp counselors. Yes. And they would, we would go to like, this chapel every day and recite um the good book and i have no idea what's happening but <laughs> i ended up like learning memorizing a lot of this because it was kind of like a competition it's like whoever can like read the most is like a good student oh so I, I remember just like being praised it's like wow you know a lot about like the bible i'm like yeah <laughs> yeah, I do. yeah I do. <laughs> and they would try and talk to you but um I didn't become religious because of it, but I realized uh, they were all just really nice people who like want to help you be safe from eternal damnation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like, because like my parents aren't even religious either. Mm-hmm. I, I th- like my idea was like, okay, it's more like building empathetic values. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I kind of get why they did that. Yeah, there's a, lot, on it. there's a lot of like positive things you can learn from like <laughs> stuff like that. But sometimes like banning Yu-Gi-Oh cards because they have demons on it or like... Or like Harry Potter was banned for a while. Yeah, Harry Potter. Witchcraft. Making you feel like sin- you've sinned if you like masturbate. It's like a lot of guilt, like things you can't do. But Which uh, I think backfired, yeah. Because a lot of people that I met through my... A lot of my friends from Catholic and the Christian school got like expelled or like suspended later on when I saw them in high school, wow. in middle school. Because they were just like, so they were all pent up and they want to rebel. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a lot of guilt. guilt Did you tripping. go f- through a rebel phase? Oh yeah, middle school for sure. But then like halfway through middle school, like if I go outside and do these rebel things, I'm missing out on LP. I, like as eighth grade, that's when I started playing league, and that's mm-hmm. when like a lot of things shifted. Right, because like I would just play Maple Story or Guild Wars at the time. I'm like, yeah, I could just go home and then just do my daily quest play stuff. Play video games. But then like when league came out, I was like, I could be practicing right now. Right. But it, that's when like gaming very, very much shifted for me. Yeah. Do you think if you weren't video gaming, you would have been doing hard drugs as a result? You would say video games saved you from a life of 
sinning? Technically, yes. My <laughs> closest friends got expelled. Oh God! What like, did they do? Uh, I started. I made those friends on Skype. <laughs> uh. I met those guys in Dominion, and I was friends with them um, from freshman year to senior year. We would like sit in Skype calls for like sixteen hours. We we're called like TRM, like team roommates. Mm-hmm. We, that was like our goal. Like, yeah. Oh. I would say gaming actually for sure changed my life in that aspect uh, for the better. Broden, did you go through a rebel phase? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I did, but not in like a strong way. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, they go into parties. And stuff. My my parents listen to this, so anything I say, they will be like, "Huh? What was that?" <laughs> <laughs> but you're an adult now. You can say. I you. am an adult. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Say so it. Yeah, we go to parties, <laughs> dude. <laughs> do, do think. Well, I also don't want to condone things for the kids. <laughs> <Yeah. so. laughs> but you did stuff. I did stuff. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, Troublemaker. <laughs> All right, bro, then what's the difference between Christianity and Catholicism? So I'm going to be honest, they're like really similar. Oh, <laughs> it's like, uh, I, just, oh. I just know this, like people from both groups watching this are like, we're not similar at all. <laughs> I think they would say it's similar. There's a lot of just like in the fine print, like like one one w- believes this, one believes that, but they both believe that this happened. You know, it's like, mm. like different directions that, will sway. It sounds like similar enough that they can just agree. It's like, yeah, this thing happened. Well, because I think I think one of them is like the umbrella. Like I want to say Christianity is a blanket or like an umbrella for like Catholicism, Protestant, Lutheran, all those. Because there's a bunch of different, right. yeah. And if they if they they all believe in Christ, so I think Christianity is the umbrella. Right. Okay, that's good to know. Like I actually didn't know too much of a difference. I just know like as soon as I went to private school, fourth period was religious studies, mm-hmm. whereas. My Catholic school, I didn't have that religious studies. It was like every Friday. What are you doing religious studies? You, we just, le- it's not like we're reading the Bible. It was, I just remember a purple notebook and like, we just have to like learn about, it was actually like history class. So mm-hmm. I don't know a lot of things about history. I know, I, just, I recall a lot of things about the Bible. It was like actually my history class was replaced by this religious studies in elementary school. Mm-hmm. And then I went to middle school and like, oh. History class. All right. Uh, yeah. It was a very different. It was a, so when you interesting were shift. learning about it, you were like, oh, this, all these things definitely 100% happened. <sighs> or was it more like, like a <laughs> Bible myth, legend? Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't kind of deal. It was, uh, I was just more, I just remember being more stimulated by religious studies than history. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, like, <laughs> it was just so much more interesting. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Talking snake. Yeah. There's magic. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, but yeah. Uh, that's all, that's all I really remember or recall from that time or that period. Do you think a, a like Christianity, like shonen anime exists somewhere? Probably. I feel like it should. And if it doesn't, like, go make that. Somebody make that. Yeah. Wait, that would actually. <laughs> like, when you read the Bible, it's so, like, I tried reading the Bible. It's really hard to read because it's, like, very segmented and the words they use and the commas. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, in a small, thick book and you you have to read through. And I always think it's, like, if they, like, did a Harry Potter version <laughs> of the Bible, I would read that shit. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like Jesus went to like, you know, the Garden of Eden, met this lady, like really <laughs> simplify it. Cause I like reading summaries of religious yeah. stuff, like the Wikipedia articles, yeah. but to actually read the Bible itself mm. is so much work. And like, if you're trying to like teach children, they're not going to want to read that. Yeah. I think that's actually what the purple notebook was then. It was like a, a like easy to digest Bible mm-hmm. for fourth graders. Now that I recall, yeah, that makes sense. But the anime, I think you're onto something. <laughs> I think the anime would for like sure Christian pop off. Anime. Like it would for sure like be like an edgy like thing to poster yeah. like when it's advertised. Like well, I think news would like, be on it. Like the first half, of the Old Testament is all like it's basically an anthology series of like like destruction and horror stories, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like that'd be so cool to watch. <laughs> yeah, like a town gets vaporized, a guy's son gets like dissolves into the sky. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, what, the Noah Noah's boat. Oh yeah, like, he's yeah, trying to like, find animals, and like people are like killing each other to go on the boat. <laughs> Dude, I'd, I'd watch this. This, is, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. like a very gritty series. Yeah, let's get like Trigger to make it or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, 
Avon. What? <laughs> what? Avon, we're filming a podcast, please. I know. I just walked out of my room. I didn't even do anything. You, do you have? Okay, Wait, Yvonne, come over here. Speak what? into the mic. All right. Yo, what's up? Yo. All right. What do you want to ask, John? Oh, there's a lot of things I want to ask John. Okay. Like one time I was playing Lux and I told John, I want to play Lux again next game. And then he banned it. So John, why did you ban my Lux? I was on PP break. Okay. I didn't hear it. Oh. To be fair, I was there and the game before Yvonne played Lux and she went, Tosa oh, wasn't asking you the question. She went like zero kills in 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking John, not you. <laughs> we also won that game that John banned. Maybe Yvonne. that little, that one game break to the next Lux game Yvonne had was the push she needed because she popped off that game. Yeah. I was surprised. You needed that breather. Yeah. That nice breather period. And then boom. I was offended. Insane <laughs> game by Yvonne. Sounds like John saved the team. No. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Uh, Christianity Catholics. Christian, like, you know. Yeah, religion. You want to join it? Anime. Uh, Yvonne, what do you believe in, huh? Nothing. Wow. I feel like you believe in the Summoner's Code. Not even that. <laughs> Tribunal system. Nobody believes in that. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, I feel like our age group and our industry, I've never really met someone who's religious. Yeah, I don't think so. That's kind of crazy because like in the older generation or like in other industry, like I would say Christianity is very popular. And when you look at our leaders, they all have to believe in God, right? Oh, yeah. Like being a is being Christian required to be the president? I think it's just PR. I don't think so, yeah. It's very, like, PR. Or I feel like you get in a lot of parties by in what you believe in. Yeah. Wasn't Barack Obama Muslim or something? I, I could be wrong. <laughs> you could be. I don't know this person. <laughs> it's Barack <laughs> Muslim. No, I think, that was, I, I think that was Trump. Yeah, go ahead and pull up his Wikipedia page. Religious oh, views. Religious let's views. go, let's go. Protestant Christian, I'm telling oh. you, no way America elects like a Muslim president, right? Oh. Maybe, yeah. Do you think? Wait, that is interesting. <laughs> I think now for sure. I think I think if there's any generation now for like a non-Christian president, yeah, I feel like that would for sure get the votes. Huh. I feel like the older generation is now like I feel like the younger generation is voting way more than any, mm -hmm. than any other generation. Mm. Is Andrew Yang a Christian? I want to know if there was like a popular candidate that wasn't a Christian. Mm. Oh, Bernie Sanders is Jewish. Which, oh. does Jewish people believe in Jesus Christ? They believe in the Old Testament, not the New Testament. But they both have Jesus. No, no, no. So Jew the Jews see Jesus as a like apostle, not as the son of God. Oh, I want once again to, to state that I'm ignorant to religion and what I say is out of ignorance and not. I am also very else. ignorant <laughs> to this. It took every bone in my body to not call it a pa patch notes. <laughs> I, 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 restrict, I restricted, yeah, I restricted, I was like, I was like pre big bang. Like we're we talking 1.0, <laughs> like every, I respect. I'm just here to learn. Yeah. Do you think people are afraid to elect a non-religious president? Because people always say, like, if you don't have religion guiding your moral compass, then you can do anything. Like, you can fly off the handle at any point, right? So people like someone with a religious views. I feel like nowadays, though, I feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of influencers I see, even especially on TikTok, like moral values are very much talked about and discussed, mm -hmm. like. Yeah, like a lot of people, a lot more people have a voice and like about like how they've been wronged and just like how to learn from it, yeah, become a better person from it. I feel like that was not advertised prior, <laughs> especially nineteen hundreds, nineteen fifties. Like, yeah, I feel yeah. like now people got a moral compass from just from the internet. I feel like in the past, religion was needed to kind of like guide people because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like. You know, especially like like olden days, like you yep. could get away with murder and like walk away. Yeah, you sail like, hey, over to America <laughs> on your ship, and yeah. you're just like, "Fuck, yeah, what's right and wrong anymore?" <laughs> yeah. right. 
Versus now with the internet, everything is posted online. Yeah, like it's very easy to say, hey, that's bad. Hey, that's good. Yeah. And we have like all the movements going on as well. Yeah. Like, oh, like, the movements. I was in the car the other day and we were talking about this. Right now, there's kind of like an Asian movement with uh, Shang-Chi. Hi, that's your Shang-Chi segment of the day. No update. <laughs> <laughs> Rats. <laughs> but like, um, just... Asian identity mm -hmm. and I was thinking to myself like you know white people black people Asian people but one group that I don't hear talked about is like um, Indians like from India yeah right because like you don't really hear about like oh the Indian movement uh, I always thought like how did they feel I, I remember hearing uh what was it Squid Game Mm -hmm. Like a lot of respect for just like having. Oh, the Indian actor in there. Indian actors, Is he Indian? And, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? It was wow. like big respect. Like I just saw like so much love for it. Like in the comments, like thank you for like representing India. Like, yeah, because yeah. they don't like sometimes like being Asian. You have like what the model minority, and it's like there are some good things, there are bad things associated with it. But I was just thinking, like, do people talk about like? Indian representation like in North American culture yeah. and I was like oh wait you don't really hear about that so yeah the Squid Game thing was pretty big because mm -hmm. it's also in Korea of all places yeah. it's like yeah we could use an Indian guy in this scene and like he was fucking amazing like one of the I yeah, most I liked his character. character yeah yeah it's also interesting that like when people say Asians you don't necessarily think Indian the Indians they're yeah. almost like their own like it's in another like category. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. It, it almost, uh, it feels like 50-50 to me, like that they prefer it that way or like they don't prefer it that way. Yeah. Like, from my experience so far. Yeah. Because they have their own ecosystem. Like when you look at YouTube and like PewDiePie had their, his own like rivalry with oh, yeah. the <laughs> Indian <right>. community. <laughs> like they have a lot of content out there, but... They, it's mostly just to themselves, like Bollywood, we hear about all the time. And uh, yeah, I wonder how they feel. It's like, do they want more representation? Hey, we're here. Because like you mentioned, when we say Asian, it's like Chinese, Japanese, Korean. And then there's like other like Filipino, Malaysian that are sometimes talked about. But Indians is like, oh, no, they're... They're brown people. <laughs> it's like when people think Asian, they're like yellow people. But Indians are Asians, right? Yeah. Why, Yvonne, why are you giving me a look for trying to be more inclusive? <laughs> John, do you want to talk about race? Why are you <laughs> talking about race? This is all I talk about. What do you mean? <laughs> you yeah, all, this, is all, this is my thing. This is my brand. Uh, yeah. John loves religion and race. <laughs> 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 and getting fired from Starbucks. <laughs> you guys want a burger? Burger? I'll take a burger. You want a burger? Well, I'll take one. No, I'll just take a burger. Okay, I only got a sandwich. <laughs> I'll take a sandwich then. I don't know if this part oh, makes okay. it into the podcast, but Yvonne is fishing for candy <laughs> in a large bag. From, from the birthday candy. The so, so I heard that it's a the correct way to eat these burgers is layer by layer. Yeah, that's what I do. You're a monster if you bite it all. Don't you fucking bite it all. This is like the equivalent of biting a Kit Kat from the side. Really? Wait, so how is this layered? Is it, okay, so is that all ketchup? Is that mayonnaise? And then is that a pickle? This burger sucks. <laughs> Where's the patty? <laughs> <laughs> it's just condiments <laughs> and a pickle. <laughs> what candy designer is like, oh, kids love burger <laughs> and they love candy. So I'm going to make a candy in the shape of a burger. Also, I've actually never, I've seen like pictures of these. I've never seen it in person. What is it supposed to taste like? Because it's not like burger flavored. Yeah, no, it's just like sugary, slightly flavored candy. Like That's soft, good. chewy. Yeah. Taking a bite of it like, like this feels like Squidward <laughs> when he takes a bite of a Krabby Patty for the first time. It's like teeth first. Just, that was very hard. That was not easy. Somebody screenshot that and just have him <laughs> confirm that John's a psycho. Oh, you're losing your pickle. Maybe the reds of the patty. And they did mayonnaise pickle. Oh, it's like a raw patty. <laughs> yeah, I can't save it. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, why did they make it into a burger? Yeah. They must have done some studies. It's like kids love burgers, kids love candy. So 
Wait, do you guys have like a, an obscure candy that you really like? Almond Joys. I love coconut. Oh, that's not very common. Most I people hate coconut. coconuts. I would. I was the kid that took all the almond joys. I just love coconut and I love nuts in general. You like coconuts themselves? Yeah, I like. I love prying open. Um, are they? What are they? Are they called actually young coconuts? I don't know what they're called. There's mm-hmm. like two coconuts. There's it's, there's like a young coconut and a regular coconut. Yeah, there's oh, like the no. furry brown kind. Yeah. And then there's like the green, green. one that you like slice open. Yeah. The oh. green ones are really good. Hmm. I don't I'm know what they're... I'm assuming the green is the young. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. the young. Like you cut it open, you stick a straw in it, you slurp it, and yeah. then you crack it open. And it's so good. And eat the meat. Eat the meat. Eat the meat. And like the it's coconut. soft. Yeah. That does make sense. Okay, yeah, it is young coconut then. Because <laughs> it's soft. And then like the... um, Even like a regular coconut is like really good. Yeah. But yeah. it's just like so hard to eat. I just love coconut juice in general. Yeah. When I was growing up uh, in Malaysia, we had a lot of coconut trees. Mm. And one of our part like hobbies is to climb this like 20 feet tall coconut tree, get to the top and just start like dropping coconuts and you <laughs> climb down and you try and crack it open. But it's like always really hard. You need like a professional scythe. To yeah. Slice it open. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, growing up in Malaysia was like living in the jungle. Dude, I could not yeah. climb. 20 foot? Yeah. You you get used to it. Like everyone climbs. You just, you just kind of like... I yeah, all kids climb climbing. trees, but like I just could not. Dude, that's... Like when you're young, you're like light, right? Yeah. It's much easier to lift yourself up. Like now I can't do it. I was a little bitch though. My hands, I'm like, ow. <laughs> ow, <laughs> this tree's kind of rough. I got a splinter. <laughs> I'm imagining little young, like jungle toast climbing <gasps> trees. And- <laughs> it was like that, like, because um, there was also a lot of monkeys and they would steal your McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> your McDo- I thought you were going to say coconut. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want the coconut. No. <laughs> I worked like, hard on that coconut. They would steal your food if you're not looking and they get pretty aggressive sometimes. So you have to like hold your food really close to you. Like if you're going on a picnic or taking a walk in the garden. Whoa. Yeah. And they would just like run around. There was elephants as well. They had to bring out for like parades. Wow. Damn. Great times. Good times. How long are you there? <laughs> uh, 12 years. Huh. Yeah, and the worst thing about, not the worst thing, but like one of the disadvantages is because you learn English in such a multicultural way, you pick up like so many different accents, like, cause Malaysia used to be owned by England. So there was a lot of British people there and they called like oh, wow. an eraser rubber, like, Hey, pass the rubber. Oh. But in North America, rubber that, refers to condom. That's yeah. condom. That's, yeah. yeah. So I'm, like, and you're I, 12 when you I moved over. I'm like, hey, can I borrow some rubber? <laughs> and like, my teacher would look at look at me weird. And when I first, oh man, the most embarrassing thing is, in class, someone said something about condiments on a hot dog. Condiment. I'm, I'm like, what's a condiment? And I went to my brother and I asked, what's a condom? Because I just did, didn't know what the full word is. And he was like, hey, you know, that's something for your teacher. But if you really want me to explain <laughs> it, I could. And I just thought it's the weirdest thing. It's like, I just want to know what you put on a hot dog. Yeah, yeah, why are so weird? <laughs> but yeah, like speaking with an accent was difficult. Did you grow up and were you born here? Yeah, uh, I born and raised uh, Slow County, like Central California. Mm-hmm. Very ag area. Uh, yeah, it's bar- farmland, strawberries, we got... Bay Area. San Bay Area. Bay Area. Both California. Bay Life. Uh-huh. What's it like <laughs> being born in California? Is it like very suburb Because like, there's like NorCal, SoCal, and you guys have your own inside joke. Yeah, NorCal is like so like tech and weed and SoCal is like Hollywood or something. I got none of that. I was in the middle ground, you know, mm-hmm. which is like, we're farm area, surf, like everyone surfed in my school or like just did outside stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I had like no perspective of NorCal, SoCal. Uh, I was like, Facebook's in NorCal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I, th- I remember like, okay, NorCal's like programmers. <laughs> and then SoCal, I would get messages from people that would need help boosting because they would get bullied for being so low rank. <laughs> at Irvine High School, I'm like, oh, oh, what? I'm uh, like, like that's a thing. Like popularity is based off of your league rank. I'm like no <laughs> one plays games at my school. That's crazy. 
Yeah. For me, like, I didn't even know there was, like, a connotation of, like, tech and weed from the north. Mm-hmm. And then when I first, like, in high school, I did, like, a trip to, to L.A. Um, or, like, like south of L.A. and, like, met some friends. And I went to, like, <sighs> one of their houses. And I remember the, da- the dad saying, like, so you're from NorCal, huh? And you're smoking a lot of weed up there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, n- no, I don't. What? <laughs> Huh, I guess people think we do that up there. <laughs> yeah. Like they they have their own like prejudice, NorCal and SoCal yeah. apparently. All right, it's time for our weekly viewer questions. Ooh. For those who don't know, every week we answer two questions from our uh, subreddit thread for the podcast. And if you want to submit yours, you can go to r slash offline TV. There's a sticky thread. And you can just ask your questions and maybe we'll pick it. Maybe we won't if it's a dumb question. This week's questions from Wanny1590. Or Wanny. As popular content creators, do you ever try to keep up with friends and family outside of the streamer circle? Let me tell you, no for me. I don't keep in touch with anyone from my high school or my university. I have two friends that I kind of like will invite to my wedding. Um, Sebastian and Z, if you guys are watching this, you guys are invited to my wedding. You two are the only people I keep in contact with, kind of. But I don't know. Once once you kind of get into content creation, it's really hard to, like, keep up with friends, especially if they're in another country, in another industry. Um, But I always feel guilty, like, not at least staying in touch a little bit. Uh, Family is another one. God, I had a nightmare. It's one of those parents dying nightmare. Oh, damn. That makes you wake up and like, holy shit, I'm so glad it's not real. Yeah. But it just makes you think it's like, one day it's going to happen. But in the dream, my mom passed away already. And it's oh. like something I accepted. Yeah. But I went to a restaurant and they served a dish that my mom made. And when I ate it, I realized shit, this is not as good as my mom's, but I will never, ever get to taste my mom's dish again. And then I woke up and I started crying. Holy. And this was like a month ago. That's, that's <laughs> powerful. Like, <laughs> damn. The way I always saw it, like, I try to make time because if my mom was sick or if my dad was sick, mm-hmm. then yeah, I would have the time to, I would just make the time and have the time to visit right. them. So having that thought i'm like okay i'm like how can i make this work yeah i was like <laughs> my parents rented out my old room so when i went to visit them for thanksgiving i was in the guest room <laughs> i was like would you guys be open to like making one of the rooms an office <laughs> and then, like maybe like, a pull out bed mm-hmm. so i at least have like a pc set up like somewhere like so it feels homey so like i try to make time now yeah yeah yeah, like, because making time with your family, it's easy when there's something wrong. Like, mm. oh, you know, dad's sick, mom's sick. It's like, yeah. oh, I can drop everything. Yeah. But what about just, like, hanging out with them, calling them more often? And it's funny, I had this dream. I'm like, I'm going to call my mom. And then I didn't because, like, I had to work. Yeah. And then by tomorrow, it's like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just see her whenever. But I just know, like, when the time comes that, like, something does go wrong, I'm going to be kicking myself. It's like, you fucking moron. Why did you spend like a month playing fucking GTA RP? <laughs> yeah. Like that month of GTA RP, you could have spent time with your family that you will never have again, right? So for those watching, call your parents. Yeah, or they appreciate it a lot. Yeah, like they're just kind of hanging out, wishing their kids would call them every now and then, right? Um, but yeah, do you keep up with friends before streaming? Um... I, yeah, if I see them in a Discord, I see like some of my high school friends playing League together, I'll like hop in the Discord call and give them like a, ha, ah! and I'll just leave. Mm-hmm. Just like, so they know I'm like, I'm there. <laughs> I'm just like. You ever think, sometimes I feel like they're afraid to like bother. Yeah, I always, yeah, I always get like, oh, you're so busy now. I'm like, I guess, but like, I'm also like, just like, my time, my time I'm just really bad with my time. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I do have a lot of time. It's just like I'm really bad with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I always hate it when they feel bad about taking my time. Like I'm just, I'm just another. I'm just still the same person. Right. I'm still John. Like kind of, it's inevitable with everyone in our friend group because like everyone 
before we all met each other had their own friends that they played with. But mm -hmm. once content creation started, it's like your time. It's like, oh, I got to go do this shoot. I got to go stream this game with them. I got to go collab with them. And just slowly over time, like there will be a barrier from both sides where your old friends just feel like, oh, they can't talk to you. Like they don't <laughs> want to take up your time. But even though like from our perspective, like you're free to hit me up anytime. Yeah. But that's totally just kind of... Well, luckily for me, gross. luckily for me, right, took care of that. You know, they made me only solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't play with friends. It was like, we're, it's like the same amount of how we'd keep in touch. I got solo queue for like a month. Mm -hmm. And then like, then we just talk for a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like I keep in touch. Especially like uh, like uh, Tanner, uh, one of my good uh, childhood friends. Like I, Not I, from high school. No, uh, elementary. Oh, okay. Area. From elementary school. And then, uh, yeah, I have like really good close friends still. Uh -huh. From high school. And uh, family. Like I said, like I try to have the mindset of if they're sick, I'd, I'd make the time or I'd have the time. So I try to adapt around that. But mm -hmm. lazy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> time management is so hard. It's hard. Broden, you probably keep up with a lot of friends. I always see you leaving the house and every other month you're going to a wedding. Yeah, yeah. I try I try to keep up with like I have a couple close friends from like high school, elementary and college. Mm -hmm. Like little little core group from each one that I try to keep in touch with, but mm -hmm. it's still hard. I once like uh I think it was like 2 years ago, I had like a a spreadsheet that marked like last time you spoke with like X. What? And each one like I would like tick it if I like talk to them. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point where I like looked at it and it was like Three months, four months, two years. When you're, like, uh oh, <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> I haven't talked to anyone. It's really hard to maintain. Yeah, but it's actually that's a really good system. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a great system. It worked for a little bit. Like if I, when I was diligent. Like, yeah, oh, I, haven't, oh, I, I need. Yeah, I need once to it starts piling up, you just feel like guilt. It's yeah, like, I can't, I can't message him out of the blue anymore. Yeah, yeah. But so I do it, enjoy getting like like random friend hits me up. Be like. Hey, how are you yeah, doing? It's easier yeah. when they hit you up because yeah. you don't want to just out of the blue. It's like, hey, how you doing, buddy? No, I haven't <laughs> talked to you in th three years. It's been one year, six months. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, keeping up with friends once you're an adult is incredibly hard, especially like your paths are going to diverge at some point, but mm. that's life. Yeah. Next question, the Kirken. Was there ever a time you've questioned whether or not you made the right decision to become a streamer? Uh, for me, no. I love entertaining and I feel like really lucky to do what I do. Like it's really one of the best jobs in the world for me. Um, stressful, but that comes with any line of work. I do think about the platform stuff, um, YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, because mm. Two years ago, I was on Twitch, then signed a deal with Facebook. And last week, uh, I signed my deal with Twitch again. And every time I'm like, did I make the right choice? Because every platform has its benefits, like the hours, the obligations and the pay and the audience. Right. And it's so hard to know what is the right choice. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, all of them would have been fine. Like either you reach a bigger audience or you just get paid a lot of money and have less stress. But yeah, I think about Among Us, like would I have been on Twitch and would I have blown up more or would I have just said, oh, I don't like playing. I don't want to play that game. That's stupid. My audience would hate that. Um, and even with the recent deals, like should I have stayed on Facebook or maybe I should have gone with YouTube because they're trying to like make big moves, but do I want to be there as they're trying to learn to make big moves or do I want to go there after they made their big moves? And if I don't make that decision now to like one or two years down the line, it's like, hey, YouTube, are they going to be like, hey, we don't want you anymore? <laughs> or I spend some time on Twitch, make a bigger name for myself and then go back to Facebook and YouTube or do I just retire from streaming? There's so much decision. I've been on Twitch for one week and it's so hard. Like... I wake up every morning with some level of anxiety of thinking like, what am I going to do today? Yeah. And after every stream, I always think that wasn't a great stream. Like all I did was play games. It, it's always the could do better. Yeah. It's like, because I know what a good stream feels like. Yeah. And those are pretty rare, like once a week kind of deal. 
Mm-hmm. And I feel bad the other six days. It's like I just played Valorant or I just played League. I think the biggest thing nowadays is I think traditional streaming with Twitch and traditional viewers in general, there's like very different, they're polar opposites, but like they're both there. Mm-hmm. So I feel like grinding Valorant, it's like a traditional Twitch viewer just kind of hanging out or yeah. even like the people that are like interested in like you and personality. And then there's like the, I feel like the newer Twitch viewer that like game shows, yeah. hype, drama, <laughs> like yeah. give us that stuff. Like, or like events in general, like that are used to like, like, like Ludwig does like a feel like an event every other week. Yeah. And it's like, like popping dopamine in them. But yeah, I think, I don't know. I feel like for your Among Us thing, that's, that timing was so hindsight and like unlucky yeah. timing. Like, I do feel the stress though. And that, yeah, that is, that's like a really cool perspective to think about. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever regret being a streamer? Or like question if it was the best choice for you? Oh, no. <laughs> I, I think like, I think it's, especially the way I'm going about it, there's like regrets and decisions of within streaming, not becoming the streamer. Mm-hmm. Like becoming a streamer, no, not at all. But it's always the decision of like putting time into like being good at Valorant or it's like I could have spent that time brainstorming and I like them, I'd say equally as much. It's a matter of all ending on one of them. Mm-hmm. Because balancing two is like very inefficient. Yeah. Because you'll never make the top on both at the same time. I don't, I think. Or it's at least very unlikely. Yeah. Yeah. So to answer your question, no, being a streamer is fucking awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And you should consider being a streamer today. It's really hard though. There's so much people trying to stream. Um, But no, being a streamer is one of the best jobs, I would say. I know... A lot of streamers complain and I think it's very normal and acceptable to complain about like... It is very easy to complain because there is a lot to complain about. Yeah. But there's like a lot of positives about it. Especially since like I think we're surrounded by so many friends that also share the same passion. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to like hate it. Yeah. It's like there we, we try and keep some perspective about like how lucky we are to have this job. But I think everyone in the world who's worked... Any job will always have like, oh, yeah, I kind of don't like this. Yeah, <laughs> this made me feel bad about my work. Um, it doesn't mean we're not grateful. It's just it's a very different set of challenges. And mm-hmm. yeah, in the grand scheme of thing, it's not that big of a deal. But when you're like in it and you're living, it's like, oh, God, this cloud group is doing this and I'm not invited kind of deal. And meanwhile, doctors are like, yeah, I just had a patient die on me today. I'm like, oh, we didn't get invited to Among Us Lobby. <laughs> Good idea. But yeah, no, streaming is awesome. Yeah. And yeah, that's the two questions we have for this week. Thank you all for submitting. And uh, everyone else, feel free to submit yours in the thread, like we mentioned. And that's going to do it for this week's podcast. Yeah. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And thank you, Mr. Masayoshi, hey, it was for a pleasure. attending. Thanks for having me. No, yeah, it was a pleasure. John, we always finish them with the guest making the weirdest noise they can think of. Yeah, every every episode. Yeah. I don't know what it sounds like. I usually, so I actually hear myself in my headphones when I talk. So it's very weird. So I actually, I make, when I make my sounds, I hear it. So what? You're yeah. this one blind then. You listen to yourself talk mm-hmm. when you stream? I like hearing my own audio. So like if something sounds scratched, I really care about my audio. I told, I talked to Scar about it and he's like, really? I watch my VODs. Whenever I change anything in my audio, I watch my VODs to make sure the audio is good and I'll like skim through it. That's so crazy. It's like, I like hearing myself. So that's, yeah, I'm actually going blind on it. All right. <clears throat> How do they go about this? Like, do they cut, are, are we talking like- do, Everyone has their own style. Everyone they, deep throat in their mic yeah, yeah. style. Yeah. yeah. I guess the most recent one, Corpse and I were playing Crab Game. I keep getting tagged in the clip and it's just me and corpse going yeah 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 like at each other like across two rocks <laughs> he's like he's like it's a rock man like yeah i'd say that's like, the weirdest noise uh, well two, thank you two demons yeah no problem thank you well there you go folks our <laughs> weekly podcast weird noise at the end of the episode by the guest segment that's definitely every week <laughs>
<laughs> all right, you guys can find John on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, all the usual Masayoshi. And we'll be back next week with another new OTV member. So tune in then. And goodbye for now. Peace. Goodbye. Bye bye. Adios. Sayonara. Au revoir.